Hey guys, Johnny H here again, bringing you another episode of a West versus East NFL showdown. This is week five. So, as you can tell, I'm not in my normal location. Well, that's because big time Mike is unable to film this week. He's got some stuff to do with his daughter. But fear not, I do have his picks and I will be revealing them game by game like we normally do. So, with that said, let's talk about last week, week four. Now, last week, I went 10 and 6. Pretty good week. It's a bounce back week from the week before. And big time Mike went 7 and 9, which means I am now 9 games ahead of him. I have a 9 game lead. My overall record is 38 and 25, and big time Mike's overall record is 29 and 34. Mike, you're almost at 500, but you're not quite there yet. Keep working, buddy. So with that said, let's get right into week five's picks. First up, we have the Thursday night football matchup between the New England Patriots and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I went with the New England Patriots on this matchup. Big time Mike went with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on this matchup. I went in there thinking the Patriots were 2-2. Two and two. This was really a must-win game for them because they're already down first place to Buffalo, who's 3-1. and one. So really they couldn't afford to go 2-3. and three. So I figured they'd be firing on all eight cylinders to try not to fall too far behind for Buffalo. I was somewhat right, but really, to be truthfully, the only reason New England won that game was because Tampa Bay's kicker, Nick Folk, missed three field goals. So, I mean, when, you, when your kicker misses three field goals, you're probably going to lose. Looks like Tampa Bay's probably going to fire their second kicker this season. Tough break, man. Whoever gets the next job. I want to say you can't do worse than the two guys before. Assuming they fire Falk, I know I would. But, yeah, well, it was what it was. Patriots get the win. I get the win. Yeah. Okay, our first 1 o'clock game has the Buffalo Bills playing the Cincinnati Bengals. This game essentially... By record, it looks like Buffalo should destroy them. Hector 3-1. Cincinnati hasn't won a game yet. However, ever since they hired their new offensive coordinator, the Bengals' offense is really starting to come around, especially since they're getting um, Joe Mixon in to take more pressure off of Andy Dalton so he doesn't have to try to do everything with the pass, keep the defenses honest. So where's Buffalo? I really don't know what to think about the Bills. They're three and one, yes, but really they don't have any receivers. McCoy, Shady McCoy, has been really killing it out of the backfield, receiving and passing. I mean, their tight end's doing well. Clay, he's doing awesome. Someone has to pick up the slack for the last the lack of depth at wide receivers. Buffalo defense has been playing well, but. I'm going to go with the Bengals on this one. They seem to be trending upward. Whereas Buffalo, I'm not really sure where they're going. I half expect them to collapse at some point. But I'm going the Bengals. And big time Mike also went with the Bengals as well. Alright, the next game is the New York Jets going to the dog pound and playing the Cleveland Browns. Essentially, I think this game really can go either way. It's a toss-up. I mean, the Jets, I, I really don't know what to think of them. They're 2-2. Two and two. Who would have thought? You know, the Browns are pretty much where I thought they would be. With the exception of one game, I picked them beating the Colts earlier, and that didn't happen. So the Browns are pretty much as good as I expect them to be. The Jets, I don't know. Um... Forte's ruled out. He's not going to be playing. I mean, if Powell can go off like he did last week, it's looking good for the Jets. 
No, Josh McCown is not a bad game manager. He's definitely not a starter, but he's not a bad game manager. So, I mean, you have the Browns. They lost Coleman. You know, Duke Johnson, great passing threat. I've said it before. I mean, Crowell, I mean, what's, in my opinion, what's he really done for that offense? So, I mean, I'm going with the Jets. I think they go into Cleveland and unbelievably are th end week five, three and two. So, I mean, it, it's, it's a real close game to call. So, big time Mike took the Browns. Again, he's picked them every single week. And it's cost them every single week. So, I keep telling him, don't do it. Don't do it. But... He went with the Browns again, so hopefully I get the win again over him. Carolina Panthers at the Detroit Lions are up next. And I have been real high on the Panthers this season. They got off to a slow start. Newton is looking healthier and healthier now. He's looking back to his old self. I mean, he kept up with a shootout against Tom Brady and the Patriots, and that might be a testament to the shaky New England defense, but at the same time, Kelvin Benjamin got hurt last week, and Cam Newton just found other targets. Christian McCaffrey finally got used more. Devin Funches just went off on him. And then you have the Lions, again, in their own right. They're having a great year, too. So, I mean, Stafford's distributing the ball. The defense is playing well. Abdullah is doing great on the ground for them. I mean, this is another matchup just like the one before that I could really see go either way. But I'm going to give the edge to the Panthers just because of Superman Cam Newton. He's got the feet on the ground. He can run. He can throw. So I'm going the Carolina Panthers in this one. Big time Mike went the exact opposite and went to Detroit Lions. Matthew Stafford just keeps proving him wrong. And it looks like he's going to just keep riding that Stafford wagon. So see what happens. All right, next up, the San Francisco 49ers go to Indianapolis to play the Indianapolis Colts. Now, the 49ers last week looked terrible. All they did was kick field goals. That passing game looked so out of sync with Brian Hoyer. I mean, Carlos Hyde, thank goodness for him on offense. The defense, on the other hand, they held Carson Palmer in check last week. And then again, what, what team really hasn't done that? So the defense is still shaky, still suspect. The 49ers are exactly where I expect them to be, except one game. I expected them to beat the Rams. Still hoping for that 0-16 season. And then you just have the Colts. You know, Andrew Luck just started practicing again. So they're, they're thinking in two weeks he'll play. Now if that happens, who knows? You know, that's something we'll just have to wait and see. If Jacoby Brissett can get T.Y. Hilton... Into the, involved in this game against that secondary. And Montechief involved against that secondary. Okay. Frank Gore is playing his old team. What usually happens when guys play their old team? They usually go off on them nine times out of ten. And the 49ers, yes, they improved their run defense in the, over the, during the draft and through free agency. But come on. It's still not up to par. Frank Gore, I'm thinking, should have a good day. Even Doyle, the tight end, he, good end zone threat. I mean, the Colts don't have a defense. We all know that. They don't. Cleveland lit up points on them. I mean, right there, that says it all. But I think with the 49ers struggles and the Colts struggles, I mean, you can really say this is the battle of the toilet bowl. I mean, you really can. But... I'm going with the Colts. I think they're just in a little bit better shape than the 49ers are, not by much. Big time Mike 
Went with the 49ers again for the fifth week in a row. Just like Cleveland. This team keeps biting them in the ass. I keep telling them, don't do it. Don't do it. Even when he's not here. Don't do it, Mike. Don't do it. But he went with the 49ers again. And like again, we'll wait and see what happens. Hopefully the trend keeps continuing and I get another basically free win from him picking the Browns and the 49ers. Tennessee Titans traveling to Miami to play the Miami Dolphins is up next. And for me, this, this was somewhat of a hard one for me to pick. Sorry, it's windy here. I'm trying to, a little windy, trying to make sure my stuff doesn't blow away. But um, the big X factor in this game is Marcus Mariota. He's going to be a game time decision. So what exactly does that mean? If he plays, I think the Titans have a great shot. Of beating the Dolphins. If he doesn't play and Matt Castle has to come in, I think it's going to be a very ugly game to watch. They better hope that running game is up to par and on tap. So, just to try to bail Castle out. And if Castle plays, that means their wide receivers are going to take a hit. You know, Delaney Walker might be relied on more just because the tight end is usually a quarterback safety blanket. And the Dolphins' defense is probably going to be chomping at the bit to get Matt Castle. And on the flip side, Miami's struggling just as well. Jay Ajayi, his knee's banged up. He looks to be playing this game. So that's a good thing to Miami. Jay Cutler has looked like the Jay Cutler of old. You know, I half thought when he reunited with Adam Gase, his old offensive coordinator, that he was going to put up somewhat decent numbers, but he's just as inconsistent as he's always been. And I went with the Dolphins in this game just because of the Marcus Mariota X factor. Mariota doesn't play. Like I said, it's going to be a long day for the Titans. And I'm kind of counting on them on them resting him this week. Because why put him in if he's not up to par and he gets hurt again even more? So I'm, I'm banking on the Dolphins just because I don't think Mariota is going to play. And Big Time Mike also picked the Dolphins as well. We got that one the same. All right. And th this isn't going to be the same without Big Time Mike because I really like getting him going. But up next is we have the Los Angeles Chargers taking on the New York Football Giants. I had to do that, Mike. I had to. That's my favorite part of the show. I love getting you going on that. But this game, the records are terrible for both teams. But really, I mean, the Chargers, they're not as bad as the record showing. I tried to point that out weeks before. You know, they've lost two games they could have very easily won. You know, they barely lost to Philadelphia. So you can throw three games there. They're almost there, but they're not almost there. Whereas the Giants, Eli Manning actually looked good last week. That offense looked good last week. You know, it looks like it's starting to click for them. Now, if the defense can do their thing and come together, I'm not saying the Giants can save their year, but maybe they can do a lot better than they are now. I mean, they really haven't shown up until last week where they don't have any life at all. Whereas the Chargers have shown burst of life, but the inability to close games. So I'm looking for Phillip Rivers to take matters into his own hands and be like, hey guys, I got this. I'm going to hook up with Keenan Allen. I'm going to hook up with one of my tight ends, maybe once or twice. I don't know which one. Sometimes it's Gates. Sometimes it's Henry. You're really rolling the dice with that one. Melvin Gordon needs to do something. So in order for all that to happen with Rivers, we're on the flip side. The Giants running game, really they haven't had a running game since Thunder and Lightning, if I remember right. Tiki Barber and Ron Dane. The Giants need to utilize their weapons. Their rookie tight end 
Eli is really liking it, and I'm digging that. I'm, I'm digging that because that gives him a safety blanket, like I've said in games past. You know, they need to utilize Odell Beckham Jr. so the defense start double covering him and freeing up Brandon Marshall. You know, until Odell, and I still have faith Odell's going to put up good numbers this year, despite big-time Mike thinking he's not. If he can utilize Odell, it will open up Brandon Marshall. Because Brandon Marshall has been having a garbage year. I, I guarantee you he's regretting signing with the Giants. You know, but that was his choice. He made his bed. He's got a lie in it. I'm going with the Chargers on this one. They've been, they've been teasing a win the last couple weeks, and I think it finally happens. Big Time Mike, on the other hand, thinks we're going to see the Giants win. So... The New York Football Giants. Big Mike's pick this week. The Arizona Cardinals travel to Philadelphia to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. And this game, I think, should be pretty much a no-brainer. The Cardinals have really, really struggled. Oh, I forgot to throw my jersey on. Real quick, apologies. When I was at the campus, I forgot to film this game. So, here I am now. Anyways, they're going to travel to the Philadelphia to play the Eagles. And the Cardinals have been really struggling lately. Carson Palmer looks like Father Time has really caught up with him. Um, you know, Larry, it's, it's affecting their numbers. Larry Fitzgerald's numbers aren't the same. John Brown's is coming back from injury. That's going to reduce J.J. Nelson's role. You know, um, it doesn't matter if it's Chris Johnson or Ellington. It, I don't think it's going to make a difference. They're, they're both not going to be David Johnson. Then on the flip side, Carson Wentz has taken a huge leap this forward this season so far. And, and because of that, Zach Ertz has become more than just a blocking tight end. So that's looking good. The Eagles did lose Staley. Not Staley. What am I talking about? Um, Sproul, sorry. Staley was like 10 years ago, 15. <laughs> they did lose... Sproles, but they have Wendell Smallward. He could do a decent replacement, a good change of pace from LeGarrette Blunt. I mean, in the end, the Eagles' secondary is hurting, and there's a slight chance Arizona could take advantage of that, but I really don't think so. I think that pass rush will get to Palmer before he has a chance to. And Elliott, their kicker, has just been light out since he earned that starting job. I took the uh, Philadelphia Eagles on this. You know, Big time Mike took the Philadelphia Eagles as well. So, I know being an Eagles fan, he was definitely thrilled that this was a matchup that he could pick them. So, yeah, there you have it. The last 1 p.m. game has the Jacksonville Jaguars traveling to Pittsburgh to play the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think this game is really that hard of a game to choose from. Jacksonville's look sketchy. They'll put up points one week, and then the next week not do anything. I mean, I get it, every, every Sunday, any given Sunday, but at the same time, come on, you guys got to be consistent if you want to be a good team. Or the Steelers, you know what you get with the Steelers. You, you know, they're in the playoffs pretty much every year. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this game. I think the Jaguars will score some points, but not enough to beat Pittsburgh. Fournette will do well. I mean, but as far as their wide receivers go, who knows? You know, Lee's on the injury report. He might not play. Al, um, Alan Hearns, do something, kid. You know, help your team out. Whereas Pittsburgh, everybody knows Roethlisberger, Bell, Brown. I mean, come on. The defense isn't as good as it has been in the past, but it should be good enough to handle the Jaguars. I'm going with the Pittsburgh Steelers at home. Big time Mike, on the other hand, is going with the Jaguars. He thinks they're going to pounce the Steelers. So there you have our 1 o'clock games. Now it's time to move along to the 4 o'clock games. And we're going to start with the Seattle Seahawks traveling to Los Angeles to play the Rams at their tiny little stadium. Tiny, tiny little stadium. 
The Rams are a team, I think, honestly, they're pretenders. I think their their three and one record is a fluke, to be honest with you. I mean, hell, they barely squeaked out of San. They, uh, they barely beat San Francisco. I mean, that says a lot to me right there. I mean, granted, it was a rivalry game, and you know, rivals play harder against each other. But at the same time, come on, it's the 49ers. Todd Gurley's having a monster year. He's looking to prove last year was a fluke. Jared Goff. I mean, I think he's average his best. I don't think he's really that good. Cooper Cup, he's doing pretty good. So I got to give some props to him. But on the flip side, the, that Seattle team runs through the defense. And the 12th man, which shouldn't be a factor, although it wouldn't surprise me to see some down there. I mean, Russell Wilson needs that O-line to protect for him. It's that simple. He needs that O-line to protect for him. You can only do so much with your feet to buy yourself time before you start taking unnecessary hits. And that defense needs to start stopping the other team. I mean, what happened to that big, fierce Seattle defense? Yeah, no one's scared of you anymore. Wake up, guys. Now you're playing the Rams. Get back on track. I went with the Seattle Seahawks. Big time Mike went with the Los Angeles Rams on this one. So you're, there you have that. All right, next up, the Baltimore Ravens travel to California to play the Oakland Raiders. Now this matchup would have been a lot more competitive and interesting, in my opinion, had Derek Carr not hurt his back. But he did. Now EJ Manuel's going to start, which is really going to hurt Cooper and Crabtree's productivity. They're going to really need to rely on Marshawn Lynch, who's having an, a mediocre year at best, to take the pressure off EJ Manuel. I mean, Emmanuel stinks. He was average at Florida State, and this is coming from a Florida State Seminoles fan. He, was, he stunk in Buffalo. Now he's in Oakland. Good luck to you, man. That defense really needs to help out EJ Manuel in this one. Then on the flip side, you have the Baltimore Ravens. Terrence West pretty much worked himself out of the pitcher, not being productive. That's the Buck Allen show now. Jeremy Macklin's semi-productive. Perryman, just forget about him. Just forget about him. I don't know what happened to that guy. But that defense, again, not as mighty as it used to be. But it should be mighty enough to take down the Oakland Raiders offense led by E.J. Manuel. And that's why I picked the Ravens. Big time Mike also picked the Ravens in this matchup. It's one of the few games this week that we actually picked the same on. And I'll get more into that later. Up next is the last 4 o'clock game. Only three of them this week. And it has the Green Bay Packers traveling to the house that Jerry built. And playing the Dallas Cowboys. And Dallas has been struggling this, this season so far. They're not off to the start. I thought they would be. Ezekiel Elliott, he needs to be productive every week to help Dak Prescott out. And that Dallas Cowboys defense needs to start doing their job and helping out that offense. You know, Prescott, he's not off to the year he didn't have last year. I mean, it's a sophomore slump. It's okay. It happens. There's still plenty of time to snap out of that. Then on the flip side, the Packers, Devontae Adams, probably isn't going to play. He's a game-time decision. I'm not expecting him to play. So that's going to hurt them a little bit on the passing game. But they still have Jordy Nelson. Ty Montgomery is probably going to be out for them as far as the running game goes, but they'll have a fill in there. But really, to me, the key to the Packers is Aaron Rodgers. So I, I don't like to bet against Aaron Rodgers. He's one of the few guys that I don't like to bet against. He finds ways to win, and that's why I went with the Green Bay Packers in this one. I mean, that just it's, Rodgers knows how to win games. I mean, heck, he... He knocked the Cowboys out of the playoffs last year, just as a perfect example. You know, the defense, I want to say the defense has really has ever really been a strong suit for, 
Green Bay not within at least the last 10 years. But the defense needs to step up a little bit. They're playing against weapons. So if they can keep the Cowboys' offense in check, Aaron Rodgers will definitely do his job, and that's what I expect to happen. I went with the Packers. And like I said, big time Mike went with the Packers as well. It's time for some Sunday night football. And this week, we have the Kansas City Chiefs playing the Houston Texans in what should be a pretty good game. I mean, as far as the Chiefs go, Alex Smith has, has been dead on this year. He is playing above his ability. You know, Kareem Hunt, excellent. Um, Tyreek Hill, after that first... After that first big game he's had, he's kind of been spot on here and there. He needs to step up and play consistent. Travis Kelsey is playing like the beast he is. And that Kansas City defense, even with losing Eric Berry, has played really, really well. And they're going to be playing the Houston Texans. Deshaun Watson, I think, should be rookie of the year up to this point because he is playing above and beyond expectations. You can make the argument for Leonard Fournette or Dalvin Cook before he got hurt, but he can't really count Dalvin Cook in now, but I mean, um, Deshaun Watson wasn't even the starter, okay, he took that job, he said, this is mine, I'm taking it, and he has been playing really, really well, He's rec- he has resurrected DeAndre Hopkins' season, so, and now with, with Wolf Fuller back, giving him another target to throw to? I mean, the kid looks really promising. But they're playing the Chiefs. So, and I think the way the Chiefs are playing right now, I think it's going to take a very, very good team to stop them. I mean, heck, New England couldn't even do it. So, I'm rolling with the Chiefs just because until they show any signs of slowing down, it's, it's, it's a safe pick. I'm going to be honest with you. Big time Mike, on the other hand, he is rolling with the Houston Texans. So he went with the Texans. He must see something with Watson. I know he's pretty high on the kid. And it doesn't hurt that the Texans are his AFC team. But he bleeds green through and through. But with that being said, it's time for... Monday Night Football. Get your popcorn ready. We have the Minnesota Vikings traveling to Soldier Field to take on the Chicago Bears. How the Chicago Bears got a Monday Night Football matchup, I do not know. I don't think they deserve it. I've always thought Monday Night should be reserved for the good teams. But I guess the league doesn't feel that way. This will be Mitch Trubisky's first start with the Bears in the spotlight of prime time Monday night with everybody watching. He is going to need Howard and Cohen to be lights out on the ground. Because let's be honest, the Bears do not have Any flashy receivers. You know, their passing game is questionable. Mike Glennon clearly wasn't the answer, and that guy stunk. And now Mitch Trubisky has a chance to cement that job. But he's playing the Minnesota Vikings, who have a proven defense. Yes, Casey Keenum is the starter. Sam Bradford isn't coming back yet. But Keenum has already proven, he did it once so far, that he can be a threat in the passing game. If he can keep up with Stefan Diggs and get Adam Tien in the game, or Tarion, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, I apologize, and get them in the passing game with a mix of Kyle Rudolph, that would take a tremendous amount of pressure off of that running game. With McKinnon, and I forget the other guy, I apologize, who are going to be replacing... 
Davin Cook. Cook's loss is going to be huge because he wasn't he wasn't only rushing the ball, he was catching passes too. And he was flat out looking like, in my opinion, the best rookie until he got hurt. And unfortunately, he tore his ACL, and that's it. We'll see you next year. Dalvin, you know, as a Florida State fan, I was really, really pulling for him. But it is what it is. And in the end, I just don't think Watson's going to overtake that Viking defense. It's a tough defense to play against. And it should hold them at bay just enough for Casey Keenum to lead that offense to score points on him. I went with the Minnesota Vikings. Big time Mike went with the Chicago Bears. He must feel that Trubisky is going to be the piece that that team needs to wake up. Either that or Keenum just isn't going to get the job done in prime time. So there you have it. Our picks for week five. So to recap, I went with the Patriots, Bengals, Jets, Panthers, Colts, Dolphins, Chargers, Eagles, Steelers, Seahawks, Ravens, Packers, Chiefs Sunday night, and Vikings Monday night. Big time Mike went with the Buccaneers, Bengals, Browns again, Lions, 49ers again, don't do it. I should be telling you to keep doing it because those are, those two teams are pretty much the reason why I'm up nine on you. Dolphins, Giants, New York football Giants. The Eagles, the Jaguars, Rams, Ravens, Packers, Texans Sunday night, and Bears Monday night. We have a total of eight games different this week. This week is going to be a make or break week for us. I am either going to pull a crazy amount of games ahead or he's going to catch up. Or we could end up splitting four apiece and I could remain nine up on him. But either way, this week is going to look good for somebody. This is a week where he can really do some damage and catch up. So, if any big time Mike fans want to wish him good luck, he's going to need it. Trust me, he's going to need it. So, next week, for week six, I'm going to be flying solo again. Just because I'm going to be on vacation. So, I will be filming pics again on location. I'm not sure where because it's a mystery vacation. I don't know where I'm going to be end up going. That's kind of the fun of it too. So, this is going really good. Any feedback you guys have on how we can make this show better or anything you might want to want us to cover would be great or spend more time on is always welcome. You know, just comment in the video on YouTube or even on Facebook. So, yeah, so guys, let's hope for another great week of football. And until next time, this is the West versus East NFL Pick Show. If you like this, as always, like the video and subscribe. Nothing more left to say, really. But Johnny H, out.